Alrighty, welcome back guys. So I've had a few video requests on how to unbrick your flight controller. Basically you did something to it to lock it up and you can't do anything with it because it's locked up. I haven't made this video yet because there's already a thousand different ones on YouTube and everyone's showing you the same way of doing it. The only problem though is the way they show you that's going to cover about 90% of you which is great but uh, for the other 10% of you, you may have to do a little extra work. And I'm going to show you both ways. So if I connect, and this is the absolute most common way of locking up your flight controller. If we go to ports, on this specific flight controller, it, it uses the CP2102 driver instead of a virtual COM port. And on these boards, all we see is your 1, 2, and 3. And MSP is automatically turned on. Basically, MSP means that uh, this is a way of two different devices communicating between one another. And in this case, on the flight controllers with CP2102 drivers, your USB cable is actually tied into UART number one. So this is going to allow your computer and your flight controller to talk to one another through UART number one. Just like if you, let's say you add in an on-screen display, then you would turn on the MSP for either UART 2 or 3, and that will allow your flight controller and on-screen display to communicate between one another through a separate UART. And for this reason, this is why you don't want to put any devices, well, you can put devices on UART 1, but you don't want to have that device connected, or at least receiving power, uh, while you're in beta flight, clean flight, or any other type of configurator because then the flight controller is trying to talk to your computer and that device at the same time and that's when things get crazy. So real quick, let me just plug in a virtual COM port flight controller just to give you a visual. So this is a virtual COM port. You will see USB, VCP, and MSP is automatically turned on. And what this means is it's not shared with any other UARTs, so you get three full UARTs. Okay, now going back, and what I'm telling you is going to apply to both types of flight controllers. I just wanted to give you a visual. If we turn off MSP, this means we are turning off that link between the flight controller and computer for them to communicate with one another. And uh, a long time ago, if you saved and rebooted, then this would lock up your flight controller. But they've added something in to where it, it won't save because it knows that no MSP is turned on, so it's not gonna save. But what if we turn this off and we turn one of the other ones on and then we save? See how it says rebooting? And it's just gonna stay there forever. Yeah, you could even change tabs. I mean, it's, it's locked up. So now if we disconnect and we try to reconnect, it's just going to keep saying this and it's never going to connect. So what is the fix? Well it is actually very simple. You just want to go to firmware flasher, choose uh, your flight controller, in this case I'm using the X-Racer F303 version 3.1. Let's choose a version of firmware and if you watch my I mean, you should know how to flash firmware to your flight controller. Every flight controller is different. Some of them you can have all these turned off. Some of them you have to have all of them turned on. Some of them you have to have certain things turned on, like the manual baud rate or not. It, it all depends. So fig just try them all out if you're not sure which, which ones you have to have turned on for your flight controller. But the key feature here, the, the key thing you need to know is full chip erase. No matter what, you want to have full chip erase turned on because this is going to completely erase and reset your flight controller. So now if I flash firmware, oh, look at me, forgot to uh, be in the bootloader mode. So yeah, make sure you jump those pins or press that button and then plug in your USB and then flash firmware because obviously you have to be in the bootloader. And I'm going to fast forward right now. Okay, and it is done flashing firmware. So let's uh, change screens. I'm going to disconnect my USB, plug my USB back in, but this time not in a bootloader, and try to reconnect. And we reconnected, so problem solved. And this is the fix I was talking about that's going to work for about 90% of you. So for the majority of you, I hope that you got it working and you're good to go. Like I said, if it doesn't flash firmware, then you may have to fiddle around with this. Some of them you have to have the 
baud rate turned on, some you have to have it turned off. Uh, I'm not, just try them all out in every single different combination you can think of. Now, for the other 10% of you, we are going to have to flash firmware as if we just replaced the processor. I actually uploaded a video a few days ago where I replaced a processor on the flight controller with a uh, with a brand new processor like bought from the store. I'm going to leave you a link to that video just in case you're interested in it, but it's going to be the same thing that we did at like, you know, halfway through the video towards the end. You don't have to bother watching that video though because I'm going to re-explain everything just in case you guys didn't watch it. So here we have the ST-Link V2. I'm going to leave you links to where you can purchase these in the description. Um, I'll leave a few different websites. So first let's get this wired in to our flight controller and after that I'll show you where to download the uh, software that you need and we will flash firmware to this. So we want to completely ignore this side right here and we're only looking at this side. And we've got SWCLK which is going to be the clock. SWDIO, which is going to be the inputs and outputs, then we have ground, and then 3.3 volts and 5 volts. For the voltage, you only want one or the other. If you look on your flight controller, you need to find the, well obviously a power and ground source, but also the clock pin and the input and output pin. I shouldn't say pins because it's usually pads. So the ground coming from this ST-Link can go to any ground, and all these pins on the edge of this board is grounds. These are all grounds. Um, it can go anywhere. Or, like I said, there might be a small little pad. I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, here we have GND, which is a ground pad. Then for power, you can use the 5 volt pin off of this and place this on a 5 volt pin here because the flight controller, it has a 3.3 uh, volt regulator Somewhere on the flight controller, all flight controllers have it somewhere because the processor is actually being powered with 3.3 volts. So you could provide those 5 volts to any of the 5 volt pins and hopefully that regulator steps it down to 3.3 volts and gives it to your processor. Uh, I like to be safe, better to be safe than sorry, just in case something is wrong with that voltage regulator. Uh, so I'm going to find a 3.3 volt pin. And on this flight controller we see 3.3 right here. And sometimes it's written 3V. It's not actually 3 volts. It, it really is 3.3. They just shortened it. And sometimes it will say 3V3. And the V in the middle is taking place of the decimal. Then for the clock pin, here we see SWC. And this can be written SWCLK. It can be written SWC. It could be written... Um, we could just say clock. It could be written a few different ways. Then for the inputs and outputs, uh, once again on here it says SWDIO. It could also be written SWD, or it could be just IO. I'm going to take four of these uh, servo connectors and solder them in onto here, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got the wire soldered on, so now let's connect it to the ST Link. If you're viewing it with the text on this side, uh, you don't want these pins up front, you want the pins in the rear. And there we go. And like I said, these are on the back pins, not the top pins. You can take this, pull it off, this is a USB, and just plug it right into your computer. I'm going to leave you this web link in the description below as well so you don't have to search for it. Once you come to this website, don't download any of these PDFs, you don't need them. Uh, you just want to come right here and click Get Software, download it, then you have to unpack it, and then install it onto your computer. Once it's installed, um, I made a desktop icon, so if you do too, it should look something like this. So let's click here. First you want to try to connect to the flight controller, so we will click target and then connect. And we see that mine connected. If yours did not connect, then on some flight controllers, you actually have to uh, enter the bootloader and then plug that uh, ST link into your computer as you were jumping those bootloader pins or holding down the button. And if you did have to use the bootloader to get it to connect, it's going to come up with a warning message. Just click OK. It's going to be fine. Um, now we need to grab some firmware. So you can just do, uh, if you use Betaflight, you can just type Betaflight hex file or 
uh, if you use clean fight then you can get the clean fight firmware um, you don't have to download at the time of recording this video this is the newest but you whenever you're watching this you always want to use whatever is the newest so there could be something newer than this by the time you watch this and because I'm using the X racer I would just find you know the X racer click here download it yeah, which I've already done so after you've downloaded the hex file you want to click open file uh, go to the folder that you downloaded it to and then click this next we will go to target program and verify and uh, you can leave your just make your screen look just like this if it doesn't already if you did use the bootloader to get it to connect you should be getting another warning message either now or after you press start so let's press start some of you guys are probably seeing that warning message right now just click OK and now the firmware is uploading uh, once the status light is blinking you can just close out of here and then disconnect it from your computer let's unplug these wires plug in a USB cable go back into Betaflight make sure you have the right COM port selected and connect and there you go so now um, I hope I covered everybody not a lot of people cover the second way of doing it um, but either way hopefully 100% of you are now covered that's gonna do it for this video thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon